Now I'm going to give you a few tips on good tone. Okay, the first part is finger placement. When you play a note on the instrument, you want to concentrate on tapping about between the fret and the halfway point. So for example, if you were to divide right here the string between the two frets, I would aim right between the middle point and the fret, just like that. So if I were to play a scale, for example, each note would be placed in that manner. Now, of course, a lot of times when you play a scale fast or you're doing songs, you're not always going to get the finger in that exact position, and that's okay. As you know, you could probably tap a little further back and still get good sound. But what this does is it optimizes the tone, and plus it allows you to feel the fret a little bit so you get a better sense of where you locate it. Okay, the next part is sustaining the next string, and this is something that um, I work on a lot, I've discovered, is when you play a scale, for example, ascending, I play the notes, and then I leave this note down and play the next two, and then I move this finger over and play that one. Now generally this finger will move right about the time this finger is going down, the second one there, uh, for strength purposes. What this does is it gives you the effect of like on a piano when you push down the sustain pedal, it gives you more over ring. Here's an example. I'll stop on the fourth note. Now you hear both of those notes on my on major second together. Now I'm going to stop on the fifth note. Now you'll hear that major third sound in there, sustaining. Now I'll play a piece of the scale. So you can hear each note overlap the highest note on the previous string. You can do the same thing descending. If I play the highest note here, and I'm coming down, I leave that finger down, and then I play that one, and then this one, and then lift this off and play that one. Again, generally speaking, when you're coming down, right about that point was when this finger will come up. Especially when you're playing faster, you'll need the extra time. But again, you want to practice trying to sustain the notes as long as you can. So you're going down, so you hear each note as I'm going in a descending pattern. So now up and down, and back down. And that type of a thing. Okay. You can also play these in a pentatonic pattern in the same way, sustaining one note, and then moving over, and then over, so that gives you this effect. Now the other part of this is vibrato. When you play vibrato, there's of course different ways you can do that. You can twist the string, like this, or you can pull on the string, or you can push on it. The main thing is the speed of the vibrato. If you go really fast, it sounds a little nervous and too intentional. If you go slow, it doesn't have much effect. Now what you want to do is come up with a nice medium paced vibrato that you end a lot of your phrasing with. For example, Also, vibrato allows you to keep the instrument a little more in tune because if the instrument, if the note's pretty much right on, the vibrato goes slightly above and slightly below the actual pitch, which tricks the ear a little bit into making it sound a little more in tune. You can do this with a chord as well. So I do that often. I'll play a chord and vibrato. And you can do it in the bass side. I've noticed a lot of times the bass side gets ignored. Okay, so look for those elements. I'm going to play a little example for you of vibrato, notes overlapping, and finger placement.
Okay, now I'm going to play a little piece of the song and look for all of those elements, the vibrato, the overlapping of notes, and the finger placements. 